Hi, it's, it's Graham here. Just got back from Harwood Forest uh, this morning. Went back for an explore because it's such a fascinating place. Uh, I severely underestimated the midgy threat. Uh, the swelling on my face is now starting to go down with some antihistamines, but I had a cracking time. Uh, see what you think. Hi, it's Graham here again, and I've got myself out for another wild camp tonight. And to be honest, I think it's probably the best place I could be. Uh, I'm in the right dog house with my my lovely wife. Uh, she went to bed last night, and me and my younger son stayed up watching The Empire Strikes Back. And I found a, a little bottle of wine in the fridge, just a little bottle. So I thought, oh, that's 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 canny. Let's have a little snifter of that and uh, it turns out it was uh, part of a hamper that my oldest son had bought her for her birthday and she was absolutely furious in the morning that there was only half half the bottle left um, so she's out tonight so I've went out and I've uh, put a couple of extra goodies in a little hamper so I'm hoping when she comes in she'll she'll find it and I'll be out the doghouse tomorrow so fingers crossed but wow, it's a good night to be out, isn't it? So I'm out with a, a canny bunch of lads tonight. On the far left, there's Ollie. He's my youngest son, and believe me, I'm honoured that he's come out with his dad. Uh, there's Seb, next left. Uh, we don't know where he came from. He just appeared, but he's he's most welcome. And then we've got Sean, a big lad, and. Confusingly, I've got two friends called Sean. I'll go wild camping with them both, but they're nothing like each other, and through the vagaries of fate, they've never actually met each other. So, this is Sean P. He likes axes. And on the far right, we've got good old Silky Nick. It's a handy man to have around. I tell you, I tell you a tale about Sean and that he's an unrepentant carnivore. He used to work on a, a game farm rear in pheasants and he's just got a new job as a food inspector working in an abattoir and uh, one night he just brings this deer carcass home uh, all legitimately killed and whatnot but it had its hide, didn't have its head but it was gutted at least and just lands on the kitchen table and uh, he's got a long suffering girlfriend so his idea was that he was going to butcher this and we got a text within 24 hours saying I think I've bitten off more than I can chew so Silky Nick, being Silky Nick he can do anything, he just got uh, got himself some machetes and some uh, butchery saws YouTubed a few videos, watched how to do it and just went round and the, 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 the butcher made a really good job of it and I have to say, I got invited around for what Sean called a barbecue, uh, you know, Bambi barbecue. And the spare ribs and the T-bone steaks were amazing. So these are a handy bunch of lads to know. So we decided to come back to Harwood, um, partially in truth because we had quite a late set off. We couldn't leave till seven o'clock and we had to get somewhere local. But also because when I was here last time, I realised how uh, how massive the place is and how varied. How it's not just monoculture pines, there's loads of cleared areas and old farms and boggy areas and there's broadleaf trees and there's little hillocks and you know there's real history here to just fascinate the place. And I was reading a bit about the history today of Harwood and it looks like it was the whole land was stitched together by the Forestry Commission from uh, existing farms and from the, the big estates at Wallington and Cragside and I just wonder how many like hidden buildings it's got like little cottages and shepherd's houses and stuff like Northumbria added to its um, 
MBA run Bothy's a few years ago when they found a little cottage at Flittingford with tree clearances and I just wonder how many places like that are to be found in these woods it's, it's just it's really worth an explore you know and we're coming up to Red Path Farm here it's one of the old farmsteads in the forest and it's it certainly looks uninhabited and I seem to remember a few months ago seeing adverts for it that wanted an expression of interest uh, for rental and it looks an amazing building but a bit isolated for me I need my internet connection these days yeah. so let's go and have a look around it Cattle stores, yeah. You had the suckler, you know, the, the house cow oh, yeah. there. That looks like a stall for an, I don't know, a horse or a cow, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. the remains there. Oh, amazing. Take a little look around the front. So the old doorways still survive. For the outhouses, well, need a little bit of work. Big old nail there. Just a tank, Ollie. Mm, probably wouldn't drink from it. CCTV. Just as well we're responsible people. We're just having a little look around. These look like the only inhabitants of Red Path at the moment. Hi guys. What's that Nick? What's it say? That's a brass fiber. Yeah, it is, it is. Locked. I have to say, if no one wants to live here, it would make an amazing bothy. I guess the only trouble is, it's pretty accessible with the forestry road. But what a cracking place, isn't it? Do you not fancy it, Nick? Would you take on the rental here? Get the window, the get it, get it eco, cool, you know, off the grid. Right. Just see I you think it'll suit you down to the ground. Well, yeah, right. no. Just going to do a slow pan around to show you exactly where I am. Those lads have left me behind. They've got no respect for the filmmaker's art. Better get up at this little, this little no and find them. There they are. We're in a nicely wooded open area now, which looks, I have to say, fantastic for hammocking. But the ground's all kind of rig and furrow sort of thing. So it's not ideal 
for tents. But you can always find somewhere, can't you? You can always find somewhere. going to crack on because the the midges are gathering here the winds just completely dropped as we've come into the, the wooded area and I just wonder if we can find somewhere with just a little bit of breeze to keep the little devils off because I don't really want to be zipped up in a baby bag all night we've come out of the forest into this beautiful replanted, cleared, open bit and it looks like there's a, a solar powered weather station there there's the weather station there although I'm pretty sure I'm not picking up a very good view of it the sun's setting over there we've got about I reckon 90 minutes of good daylight and we still really haven't found anywhere we could pitch so the, the pressure's on a little bit to get somewhere soon so we've walked quite a bit further on and uh, found some nice nice woodland here the midges are a little bit troublesome but they're okay and I found a bit of wood sorrel here this stuff it tastes like um, like apple peel it's got a lemony flavour to it mm. very refreshing Oh yeah, I've just had to mask up a little bit because the the midges, I have to say, are, are, are getting worse around here. So I'm glad I've got that uh, midge mesh on my on my alt kit bivy. So, just show you my setup for the night. It's just a standard three by three DD top with an alt kit Elan hooped bivy underneath. And I've just rigged it up very simply, just as simple as it gets really. Just a bit of paracord through the ridge line, around the tree, and then just a carabiner on the end, tied into that, clipped into that loop rather. And on the other side, just a similar system, but with a with a, with a prusik knot, just so I can tighten the whole thing up. And for Dyneema, guys on, on each corner inside I've had to lie the bivy um, across ways rather than with the length of the the tab just because the whole ground is kind of rig and furrowed all the, you know the way the trees have been planted so this is where I'm sleeping tonight and this mesh here it's going to keep me midgy free, I hope. Time will tell. So, before it gets too dark, I just wanted to show you this little bad boy. It's my new favourite small knife. It's a neck knife. It's made by Boca, and it's a it's a real sort of like uh, unusual design, cleaver style. The handle looks a bit uncomfortable until you come to hold it 
and then it kind of makes perfect sense. Nice bit of jumping there, and it's got a good wedge shape on it. So it's brilliant for cutting through small branches and, and chopping your food and stuff. I like it. It's a cool little knife and really good retention in the plastic sheath, the Kydex sheath. So it works really well as a neck knife. So my plan was to do a bit more filming tonight. Um, get me bait on, get a brew going on that. But to be honest, I, I'm not going to stay in the same place that long because the midges are getting worse. Uh, they're not quite... Uh, killed our levels of apocalypse but they're, they're, they're pretty bad so my hope is I'm gonna keep moving around I'm gonna keep moving around and it's after 10 o'clock now so I think it's gonna get dark pretty quickly my hope is the midges will drop uh, when the light levels drop as well fingers crossed so brilliantly silky Nick has just tried to take a, a sip of Guinness through his, his midgy head net and I'm gutted I didn't get it on camera. Do you want to recreate that, Nick? <laughs> <laughs> Mint. Mm, thousands of little midges, I can feel them on my hands. Oh, awful, aren't they? Yeah. Just wanted to get a view of the sun going down here because it just looks beautiful. It's like a, it's like an oil painting. It's like one of those paintings you see in by John Martin, you've seen the Laying Art Gallery. That looks fantastic. And all those lads there think I'm talking absolute rubbish. But well, I know the Laying Art Gallery. <laughs> <laughs> we think you always talk rubbish. Look, lads, have a look at the view. Have a look at this on the viewfinder. It looks amazing. Look at that. Tell me that's not an amazing view. No, that's kind of... It's all right. All right. Yo. I like this. It's nice. Nice, cool. Cool. Oh. Is that what happened, mate? Come on, get in front of the camera, guys. Skull. Skull. Here's to friends and here's to wild camping with a sunset like that. Chuck. Cheers lads. Ollie. Even my son's in it. Good lad. So cooking wise, we've got the the Soto Windmaster again. I'm gonna put a little bit of rapeseed oil into my tin. And because we had Little's best beef burgers made with bone marrow last time. I thought we should let the vegetarians have a chance. We've got some Linda McCartney vegetarian mozzarella burgers. Let's see. Oh, and they're pretty much defrosted in here and gone to a bit of a bit of a paste, really. That's uh, okay. Let's try and cook them. This might take a little while so I'll bring you back when they're nearly done. So the burgers are pretty much done now but I'm going to give them a helping hand by just gently frying a couple of slices of halloumi. And then on top of that I've got some homemade garlic mayonnaise. I find if you make it with uh, a good proportion of rapeseed oil and use organic eggs it goes a beautiful yellow colour and it's pretty pungent and stuff. It's got two or three raw cloves of garlic mashed up with salt in there as well. That'll be lovely. So this is Ollie's burger here. Put a good dollop of that mayo on. And I bet that's not too bad, Ollie. What do you think of that? Looks like some carrot. It looks what? Ah, oh, good. Wow. 
Oh, that mayonnaise is something else. That was lovely. Look at that, man. It looks all right. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm. What do you think? Sorry. Is it better than a is, is it better than a beef burger? No. What? No. Oh, okay. Well, there you have it folks. And for pudding, all we're doing is boiling a couple of the co-op's finest microwavable sticky toffee puddings in a little pot and I reckon they're probably ready now let's turn that off and I'm going to use the world's smallest pair of oven gloves and you've even got the thumbs to pick them out No, I'm not. There's no grip on them, hardly. Ooh, aye, ooh, aye, ooh. That's, there you go, Ollie. Hi, guys. Um, I'm not going to do any more filming tonight, because I can't really, because the midges have gone, but I've got to get myself wrapped up in the here, because they'll be back in the morning, probably before I'm awake, and... You can't really film anything in, in, inside a bivvy like this. So I'm just going to have a nip of whiskey. This is uh, Scarpa Flow. Lovely Scottish whiskey I got for my birthday. That's really nice. Got this beautiful um, round hip flask. And it's great. Then one of my mates pointed out it's probably round because it's meant to fit in the sporran and I, I did get it second hand off eBay so when I'm sipping now I try not to think where it's been but it's alright nice whiskey anyway it's going to be light well, it's just about half eleven now I think it's going to be light in uh, I don't know probably four or five hours I'm going to try and get a bit of sleep and if I'm really lucky I'll be awake when it's still dark and I'll, I'll I'll get the whole thing down before the midges get us but anyway I'll catch you in the morning good night morning folks it's now 4 30 I was up really early um, just to avoid those midges coming out and I think just about done it they're just starting to come out now but I'm all packed away as you can see the only trace I've left is just a little bit of flattened ground as it should be So I've made the mistake of aiming for a, a footpath on the map and I'm bang on the footpath here on the map 
but as you can see it doesn't really exist on the ground I think we've just found a future nice little camping spot tiny little clearing the ground's all flat and pine needly you can hammock here as well as pitch a tent looks lovely I think I'll drop a tag on this place so I can find it again there's a style here but it's unfortunately it's it's a bit cream crackhead so we're gonna to have to get over somehow though it, it is a public right of way and my legs aren't as big as Sean's the post that's it Yay. We're back at the car now and the plan is we didn't have any breakfast because we're up early and packed away so the midges couldn't get away. So the plan is to go to Weatherspoons for a breakfast this morning and you can say what you like about spoons and I do, plenty of people do, but it does a decent breakfast. It's been a canny night, thanks for coming along.